Engines today make more power using smaller displacements and less fuel. These precision designs are less tolerant than those of even 10 to 15 years ago, and even minor variances in fuel, spark, or engine sealing can cause drivability issues and complaints from your customers. Testing the mechanical condition of the engine can be especially time consuming. There are alternatives, however, and that is the topic of this month's edition of The Trainer. Back in the late 70s, an engine with 100,000 miles on it was considered at the end of its useful life. Today, engines go 100,000 miles and more with no problem. But when there is a problem, it can be time consuming to diagnose. Many transverse designs require removal of the intake plenum in order to access the rear bank of cylinders just to perform a traditional compression test. One increasingly common drivability problem is deposit buildups on the valve train and in the combustion chamber. These deposits can result in intermittent cylinder sealing and compression loss. Minor valve damage can often go undetected using traditional compression and cylinder leak down tests. This intake valve from a Pacifica 3.5 even passed the machine shop sealing tests. Testing techniques using a digital storage oscilloscope, also called a DSO or lab scope, can detect issues that traditional techniques miss and do it in less time. I'm using a Pico 3000 series 4 channel scope here, but there are several excellent scopes on the market. Some, like the Pico and the Automotive Test Solutions eScope, are PC based, while others like the Fluke, Snap-on, OTC, and UEI models are handheld units. All are more than capable of performing the tests I'll show you today. Like traditional compression tests using a mechanical gauge, these first few scope tests require that the engine be cranked over but not be allowed to start. So first, I'm going to disable the engine by disconnecting the injectors on this Saturn IV cylinder. You can accomplish the same by removing the fuel pump fuse or relay, but always disable the fuel system to avoid washing down the cylinders. For the time being, I'm also going to disable the ignition system by disconnecting the coil pack. The first test is going to be a relative compression test using starter current draw as the indicator. So I'll need my high amp clamp on one channel of my scope. I'm also going to grab a standard lead and a couple of dolphin clips out of habit. This is the same connection I use to test the battery starting and charging systems. This test is based on a simple idea. It takes current to turn the starter motor and it takes more current to turn the starter motor against the resistance of the engine it's trying to spin. My scope's high amp clamp will convert that current reading into a voltage signal my scope can understand. And since the scope traces voltage over time, I can view the current draw each cylinder is requiring to pass through TDC of their compression strokes. A weak sealing cylinder will need less current than a healthy one, right? And that's what I'm looking for on the scope screen as I make this test. I placed my high amp clamp on the battery negative cable, but since current is the same everywhere in the circuit, you can place it on either one. Just reverse the clamp if your pattern is upside down on your scope screen. Now start your scope trace and crank the engine over with the throttle held wide open just as you would normally. And this is the pattern you should see. The red trace is battery voltage and the blue is the starter current draw. The first few peaks show the current needed to get things moving, but then the pattern will settle into the more uniform trace you see here. Each hump is a cylinder moving through its compression stroke. In this pattern, all the peaks are uniform, indicating that all cylinders are resisting the starter equally. But that alone doesn't mean they meet spec. An engine with a camshaft out of time, for example, can produce a similar pattern. The amplitude, or difference between the lows and highs of each hump, is an indication of the amount of resistance, a reflection of the actual compression pressure. 
check lots of known good engines to get a feel for what normal looks like. Can you see the difference in this pattern as compared to the last one I showed you? See the missing hump indicating a missing cylinder? This was taken from a V6 engine with one plug removed. A weak cylinder doesn't offer as much resistance to the starter as a healthy one does and requires less current in the process. Your scope can pick up on compression differences between cylinders as small as 10%. Using this technique is fast and can justify the expense of further testing to your customer. By adding a trigger to the number one spark plug or coil, you can use the firing order to ID exactly what cylinder is weak. You can also quickly verify that spark is happening when it should by looking to see if the trigger occurs just before the peak. The next technique I want to show you is another relative compression test using a versatile tool from Cenex called the First Look Pressure Sensor. The First Look Sensor is a piezoelectric device that doesn't actually measure pressure. Instead, it reacts to changes in pressure, and it is very sensitive. It can be used to perform the test I'm going to show you and more. I'm going to use the First Look Sensor to monitor changes in exhaust pressure coming out of the tailpipe. Does it make sense to you that a weak cylinder will push out less air than a healthy one? Sure it does, and that's what I'm going to look for with this test. Once the sensor is in place, I'll do as I did in the earlier test. Crank the engine and capture my scope pattern. With this tool though, I'll use the AC voltage function on my scope. You may need to choose AC coupling on yours to get a good pattern. This pattern was captured from a Ford Focus and is typical for a four-cylinder engine. As with many scope patterns, this one will vary between differing engine designs and cylinder counts. Don't focus on the trees, but look at the forest. Look for what stands out as different. If one peak were lower than the others, I'd wonder why. But as these are all uniform, I'd say it's a good bet the engine is sealing just fine. If I had suspected a weak peak, I'd want to know if the leak was in the valve train or in the bottom end. By moving the first look sensor to the oil dipstick tube and repeating the test, I can see the pressure variations under the rings alone. As these are uniform, the problem must be on top. The last technique I'm going to show you uses a pressure transducer like this WPS 500 from Pico. Fluke also makes pressure transducers, as does Automotive Test Solutions. This tool actually measures the pressure in the cylinder and can also be used for nearly any pressure measurement you may want to perform, including fuel pressure and other hydraulic measurements. The WPS 500 has three pressure ranges and three zoom levels with a rechargeable battery and comes with the adapters you need to connect to most engines. The tool is used in place of the spark plug and can be used just as you would your mechanical compression tester. The advantage, as you will see, is that you can trace the pressure throughout the entire 720 degree piston cycle, gaining lots more information in the same amount of time. It can also be used to monitor the pressure in a running cylinder and is becoming a valuable diagnostic method. The trigger you see is left over from a previous test and is not needed for this procedure. Often you'll have identified a possible problem cylinder by using one of the previous tests or other diagnostic methods. In that case, you may want to only test the one with an issue and one without that you can use as a baseline. This is what a healthy cranking compression pattern looks like using the transducer in the cylinder. Actual pressure can be recorded by the peak pressure reached and is all the mechanical gauge would have told you. Notice first the small dip highlighted. This is the exhaust pocket. Also notice how the peak is symmetrical in this known good cylinder. Here's a bad cylinder. See how peak compression is lower than it should be. The exhaust pocket dips much deeper and the peak is not symmetrical. Obviously different than the known good baseline pattern but it is the running pattern that holds the real value. Here's one example of a known good running pressure pattern. By adding the same cylinder's ignition to the scope capture, I can tell if ignition timing is correct. A few scopes have the ability to lay out the piston's travel on the pattern for easy reference. I use Windows Paint program to do the same. A is TDC compression. The piston then moves down to B 
or bottom dead center of the power stroke, then begins its rise to C, or top dead center of the exhaust stroke. Next comes D, or bottom dead center of the intake stroke, ending at E, TDC of the next compression stroke. As the piston nears BDC of the power stroke, the exhaust valve opens and results in the ramp up in pressure you see at G. As a rule of thumb, the BDC line should intersect that upward ramp midway. Too much outside of the box you see indicates a late or early opening, perhaps caused by an out of time exhaust cam or worn cam lobe. Next, the piston nears TDC of the exhaust stroke and the intake valve opens. Since both valves are open for a time together, you won't quite see the same ramp down as you did with the exhaust alone. Instead, look for the center of the ramp to occur shortly after TDC as shown here. Make sure that you put everything back together again before closing the hood and sending the customer on their way. That'll do it for this edition of The Trainer. I'm Pete Meyer. See you next month. Want more tips like the one shared in this video? Join us November 22, 2011 as we host a live interactive webcast on fuel system diagnosis with TST. Register today at motorage.com forward slash fuel system diagnosis.